So hello and welcome. Today we are coming to you from Log9 headquarters in Bangalore, uh, where India's first battery cell manufacturing unit has been set up. Remember, all the auto OEMs, any company who's manufacturing any kind of electronic products, or even a two-wheeler, three-wheeler electric vehicle, is kind of importing the kind of batteries and cells that are used for the battery management system. And I'm joined by the founder of Log9 Materials, Dr. Akshay Singhal. Thank you and welcome to Business Today TV. Thank Congratulations you for, for uh, completing your seven years. Seven years, seven years today. in yes. existence, and today you are officially you officially launched a assembly line for India's first indigenously manufactured cell for the batteries. Tell us about it. Uh, what does it mean in India's uh, Atma Nirbhar Bharat scheme for going uh, cell dependent on cell manufacturing in India? So, uh, when as we entered into the era of EV revolution, right? Uh, the thing was that none of these batteries or cells were made for the Indian requirements and conditions, whether it is our temperature, climate, whether it is the type of vehicle that we use, two-wheeler, three-wheeler, the very India unique kind of a solution. At the same time, the type, type of driving patterns that we have. And when we were looking at these kind of requirements, it was completely stark from what you see in the temperate part of the world, for example, US, Europe, China, Japan, Korea, all of these places. And what happens is that when you try to get these batteries or borrow these technologies or just import these products and try to force fit them in the Indian market, we see lots of challenges. These challenges can be performance related, life related, and in the most extreme of the cases, they can be related to fire and safety hazards. And at the same time, what is happening is that our vehicles were based on fuel so far. And for that fuel, we were dependent on countries like Middle East and other places. And now we are looking at EV revolution and will be dependent on China for most part of our cell imports. So it's similar to climbing one ditch and falling into another one, and a worse one, if I can say that. So from that perspective, developing technologies which are relevant for India, for our conditions and requirements, at the same time have we made consciously thinking about what kind of material supplies that we have in the country, what kind of natural reserves that we have in the country. And that's what we have done at Log9, where we are making batteries which can sustain higher temperatures that we see in the country that can enable vehicles to charge in 15 minutes time, offer longevity of life and reliability on the pack and being completely safe at the same time. Also, the materials that are going in these cells can completely be sourced within India. Lithium definitely will remain something which we'll have to be dependent on. But even that problem can be solved because we are working towards bringing in lithium recycling, which becomes an urban mine of sorts, that you become a hub for old or uh, all old batteries to come in and then you take out lithium and produce new batteries. So with that, we can look at today, as we announced in our uh, event itself, we can look at a complete path to self-reliance and at the same time producing reliable products for the Indian market. Right. Uh, Akshay, tell me about uh, what, how uh, we come to the main incident of uh, the recent mishaps that have happened. Uh, if, a, if, a, if, a, if any company uses your battery, you guarantee it will have nine times more longevity, more uh, durability, effectiveness, uh, plus it won't catch fire. Because as of now, the in initial indications are that it's the cell who's catching the fire in the ultimate battery management system. Uh, so if I see your cell, uh, why should a company take your cell and not probably import another cell? So why they should take it is because we are offering a charging time which is faster than a mobile phone. So it charges, the vehicle charges faster than the mobile can charge. It offers a battery life of more than 20 years, which is much more than the life of the vehicle itself. So you don't need to worry about changing the battery a couple of years on the line or seeing a degrading range on the vehicle itself. At the same time, it provides you consistency of performance and this thing. To your first question, whether once somebody has the safest of the battery out there in their vehicle, is it the complete solution? No. There's a caveat there. Only the battery being the safest will not serve the purpose. The entire vehicle engineering has to be safe because if there is a fault let's say in different electronic components which are there on the vehicle whether it's the vehicle control unit uh, the telematics unit or even the normal as simple as the wires that are running through the vehicle right then battery can't do much battery why, why might be isolated and it is safe but if the vehicle caught fire with something something else there's loss in life of, there, there would be loss of life and property so when we're talking about evs we have to engineer them ground up in india and that's the biggest missing piece in this revolution today, okay. where why Log9 is building the safest batteries, ground up, uh, self-reliant and self reliable batteries out there. At the same time, we're working with various OEMs to make sure 
that the kind of platforms which come with the batteries are safe end to it okay. from the battery to the electronics of it right so uh, your batteries are safe you 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 can you say you tend to say that uh, to answer to, to the common person who is watching this uh, why are evs catching fire what is wrong really with the cell if you could probably explain it in in a more simpler term why are evs catching fire what is going wrong in the cell and what are you doing it so that it doesn't catch fire so there are two parts of it one is uh, what is the starting point of these incidents and the second is what aggravates and leads to a catastrophic disaster so usually and this is not 100% but usually what we have seen as we analyze different instances the start of the fire is typically in certain electronic component because we have heated temperatures and other and also a lack of proper design choices so we have not using the right kind of wire not right not, not the best quality of electronic component so some of the other electronic component fails get shorted short circuit and uh, it fails and uh, that happens right so that is typically the starting point now this electronic component can be on the vehicle can also be inside the battery right it can be uh, inferior quality bms or the wiring architecture electronic architecture inside the battery as well typically that's where it starts and when a fault happens the battery will rush energy out of it into that fault to blow it up right short circuit will happen and then there will be more energy flowing and if you don't have safeguards in place to control that flow of energy when a short circuit has happened or a failure mode has happened then it leads to a catastrophic disaster having said that there are multiple types of chemistries out there chemistries when i mean types of batteries that are available in the ecosystem some chemistries are more temperature resilient or resilient to any kind of failure mode and certain are less and specifically when we are talking about indian climatic conditions of high heat and all of those things we have to make a conscious choice that we are choosing chemistries which are more temperature resilient which can bear more stress and strain because if you look at it the revolution today in india ev revolution today in india is driven by vehicles like two wheelers three wheelers and small four wheelers right these are small vehicles there is space constraint there is cost constraint and because of which you cannot have very sophisticated cooling mechanisms also built in and that's why resilience to temperature and resilience to stress and strain is important otherwise batteries can themselves go into a failure mode or aggravate the problem once a failure in the electronic component happens okay so these are the reasons why it is happening so the solution to that uh, obviously that would be the next question is to engineer the entire architecture keeping in mind all the safety requirements and not just getting swayed away by putting out big marketing claims okay. you cannot offer a customer very high performance at the cost of their life and property mm. correct Uh, in fact, we when we spoke earlier, you mentioned that you cannot apply a software mind to a hardware right. uh, product. Uh, so, so coming coming on to the next question, uh, how much money have you put in to uh, develop such a technology and eventually manufacturing? What are the capabilities as of now, and when do you plan to expand? Give us those details. So, as a company, we have raised so far more than twenty-five million dollars uh, across equity and debt. Uh, we have been constantly developing and progressing technology for the last seven years as we started out of IIT Roorkee and then moved to Bangalore. Uh, so far today we have already at the battery pack level we have a capacity of producing uh, batteries enough for 10000 uh, 3 uh, wheelers on an annual basis uh, very soon in the next couple of months we are coming up with a larger facility uh, very close to this current uh, campus itself which will have a capacity of 40000 3 wheelers being produced on an annual basis and then this will be further ramped up to 4 lakh 3 wheelers equivalent batteries now you can make 2 wheeler 3 wheeler 4 wheeler truck bus whatever but i'm talking in terms of 3 wheeler equivalents just to give you a sense of uh, the scale so that is on the battery pack level and today what we announced is the establishment of the largest cell making line in india and southeast asia and this is where uh, there are two, two two things which i wanted to understand one is that in batteries in ev batteries and advanced batteries there are two levels of manufacturing one is cell and then when you make the cell you combine multiple cells together to make a battery pack so when i talked spoke about battery pack scale that is a different scale altogether and then the cell level is a different scale altogether right um, to, to, on to my last question now uh, further move further going uh, your batteries would be applicable to all the electronic devices including solar panels uh, or uh, battery or uh, battery panel ba battery packs and uh, the charging uh, the, the charging uh, the, the, the the portable chargers and what all can we expect from you from the from the marketing industry because i know your sole focus is of course your Major EV battery. Cell battery. So, and think, so, what all products are you planning to launch now? 
Right. So one of the important things is that at Log9 we have taken an ecosystem approach. Okay. We in a nascent industry, you cannot have a hands-off approach that I made this, this piece of the product and then I sold it and I forgot about it. That strategy cannot work in an industry which is growing, which is developing. It's a baby right now. So in that industry, you need to walk the entire path. So we have gone to the extent that we make our batteries and cells. We work with vehicle manufacturers to integrate them on their platforms, make sure that everything works together harmoniously. At the same time, then we further facilitate the customer to get access to the right kind of charging infra. You already would have seen downstairs the charging infra that we already have in the campus and there are multiple such uh, nodes across the country that we have facilitated. And stitching together the right kind of vehicle management system. Right. So today we have a dashboard that can predict that the vehicle's tire pressure is off and that because of that the range is dropping down. Oh. So we are going all the way from there to hand-holding the customer on the road. To your question of what other applications are coming up, mm. we already have batteries on two wheelers and three wheelers uh, on the road or in the pilot testing phase. Uh, next upcoming is four wheeler uh, cargo vehicles, four wheeler taxi platforms, then trucks and buses for first for intercity applications and then for longer haul applications as well. Mm. At the same time, avoid, apart from mobility, uh, we are already uh, conducting some pilots which will be uh, soon commissioned on the stationary storage side. Because if you look at EV mobility, the purpose of it is to solve for environment and climate change. But if you will keep on using coal power mm. to charge these vehicles, that problem is not going away. Mm. But it is very important to harness solar, wind and other renewable sources of energy. And for that to happen, you need to store that clean energy in some form of batteries or some kind of storage solution. Mm. So batteries are tremendously required on that front as well. And without that, the Prime Minister's vision of having 500 gigawatt of renewable mm. energy generation in India is just not possible. Okay. So we are constantly pushing forward for deployments on the stationary side as well. Uh, okay, now before we conclude, what are you, are you, are you, are you in touch with other OEMs? Uh, what, what is in the pipeline? Are you talking with some major OEMs for supplying a battery, for the government contracts coming up? Any more? Uh, so we have 11 different OEMs that we are working with in different stages of vehicle integration, uh, out of which uh, Hero Electric, Jitendra, uh, then Omega Seiki, they're already announced in the market. Uh, either the products are already out there or they are in the process of final regulatory approvals and tests and uh, pilots in that sense. We also announced a partnership recently in Pune with Pinnacle Industries for truck and bus kind of applications. And then there are more OEMs which will be announcing in the near future. Great. So, uh, well, that was uh, Dr. Akshay Sindhil, uh, the founder for uh, Log9 Materials, talking to us about what really makes these batteries and the cells that we're manufacturing in India for the first time uh, will actually be of benefit to India in realizing its Arthur River Bharat scheme. And remember these words that Akshay Sindhil told us. And this is India's first cell manufacturing facility and now with this uh, dreams and vision we don't have to import the crucial part which is the cell of a battery anymore. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.